Neil, which, you know, we've seen a lot alongside of the Ziggs as well. The Vladimir with W Max has actually, and Grass has actually been really picked up by a lot of players, including King. Yep. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing it. I do think trying to play it into that's that's Birdall, right? I believe, yeah, Hoya Birdall. Love and that Duck Dom <laughs> coming to uh, cheer on the old team. Oh, we hey! know this guy, a champion of the LCK multi-time. Delight, of course. Very prepared. And we'll see if it works out for them on the rift. Because we're ready. Let's hop on to it for game one. With uh, the old logo, we have lane swap coming through here. So aiming will be playing towards the top half of the map. I think getting the Camille. To Definitely work. something that is part of the strategy here for DK to get Faker onto you. And we'll see how he does prepare, or rather play in this game. As we are going to have a couple of TPs coming in from D plus Kia as they look to end the lane swap here and pick up this big wave. This is always a bit of a risky move. And I think DK did the right precautions, Ew. right? In that regard, a pretty decent win. But DK going into the lane swap knew that they were going to fall behind slightly in gold. But you got through the early levels for you, Camille. And then you also um, yeah, have the yeah. aiming go kill. But Ziggs. As strong as he is, I think oh. quite that is all. Yeah, Guma in a lot of trouble here. He does have the magical journey, but following is Mohammed. Guess who's here? It's Lucid. The jump scare from the jungle. It will be Moham who does pick up the first blood. Guma not even bothering to use his flash. Quote unquote counter pick for him. I mean, it was counter pick basically uh, because he picked it after the rumble, but rumble doesn't really have any counters, so uh, good that luck. Takes Guma out of. Uh, the equation, which is also why he is behind the money. CS yes, is uh, we might have another free free here, but Faker is on his way. King and getting in there as well, and he's going to take a bunch of damage. Avoids the fear by flashing, but it doesn't seem like that's what DK wanted to go for. It looks like they didn't have a lot of vision to know exactly how many people were there. Uh, owner is here as well, probably just highlighting the fact that Owner is above level 6, and this is where you want your Nocturne to be, right? As they are looking for a play here on a Moham, the Eclipse is up. He's also just going to flash a lot of... A lot of very safe flashing in this game. Faker did it. We saw Moham did it. I mean, Faker's probably going to die, so he had to do it. Here comes an equalizer. As King and continuously getting pushed out. Carrier and owner here. But we got Moham and Lucid here as well. Lucid just waiting. Goma's on his way. His alt out if they do decide to go for the dive. Here comes the Nocturne, avoided with the Camille ult and the Maokai ult coming out as well, looking for Owner. As a ton of damage over the top from the Ziggs. Owner in a lot of trouble, will avoid a bunch of the early damage, but eventually does go down. Zeus getting pretty low himself, and the counter dive comes out. The cleanse here from Guma, but the follow up from Lucid, and they're gonna get Zeus as well. But the stun comes in, Lucid and Moham super low, but there's nothing that T1 can do about it. You are barely, uh, barely ahead in gold. I imagine because of the fact that when aiming TP'd, Faker was just getting the plate. So by the end of it, uh, T1 is still have <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like they have kind of early plays. The Ziggs eventually will still be a big threat in this game, especially with the Camille and the Maokai. Oh. But uh, not quite what you were looking for. That's a lot of people. King and might have to flash again. I'm trying to bait him in as Zeus. And yeah, nice dodge on the Bard ult, but here comes the Nocturne. Very difficult to get away from this one. The Fear is coming in, but he does avoid a little bit of the damage, but not the Fear. And now the Equalizer will come down, and Kingen is just dead. DK not able to turn this, and T1, they've got everybody in this one. As Baker comes over, a double kill for the Rumble. And now Zeus is off to the races. Uh, now, not so much. Zeus is going to go back and turn into a very scary toaster. The only upside for DK is that they're probably going to be able to turn this into Herald, as it was a very heavy investment towards the bot side of the map from T1. Yeah, and that can still be very useful with your Ziggs. You know, you throw that in. King in a lot of trouble here. He is not going to respect the lack of vision. And he just gets punched to death by the Rumble. Three kills already for Zeus. And we talked about this top lane matchup. Moham now in a bit of trouble. Faker keeping him around. Peria wants to do so as well. Here comes Owner. Not having the paranoia, but he's just going to flash on in as, oh, so low is Moham. But the lock in comes in. It doesn't matter. The Q will land the final blow. And that is another kill on the board here for T1. You get the kill in bot side. That means that DK is going to have to play a lot more respectful as uh, we are still attempting a catch here. Lucid has ult, but 
I don't know what it can do. Right. He's going to land the stun here on Azeus, who is in a lot of trouble, actually. That's a big shutdown that just got given over to Showmaker. At the end of the day, a lot of TPs and map movements that do get used to the top side aiming has to TP into mid. Oh, the satchel! And Guma has to flash, and he's trying to turn it here onto Amy, but he's not quite able to. Heal comes in from the bard as Guma will use that speed boost to just run away with the strup. But man, that was getting spicy. It's it's a chaotic game, Valves. There's a lot of stuff happening, uh, yeah. and it's it's over forces on either side. Should be able to get this turret with the satchel as there it goes. Uh, no blades, but still, mid lane turret is always going to feel like a big win as Kingen is still with Camille. So, like, despite the fact that his life has been very unfortunate, he can still do stuff like this. Yeah, he's just going to throw an ult in, and you can't get out of that one as Kingen. He does get very, very low, but he did his job, and there's not much that Carrier can do up here on the top side. So a, a turret, a couple of turrets go to DK. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason for him to stop. They did show a lot of people down on bottom side. He is going to stop now just to do grubs, and Guma's going to get hit by the satchel again, and this time he doesn't have flash. He's in a lot of trouble. The magical journey will not save him. That is another shutdown given over to DK. This time it's given to the Ziggs, who is casually 2-0 and 3. And with MF, if you have your BT, oh, possible collapse. Yeah, they're trying to turn, actually, on this Zeus. That's a ton of damage. He has to flash away, but now trying to get on top of Aiming, who is left all alone. He satchels over the wall. It's beautiful. But that is Ione, who can do even better than the Ziggs can. Kingen's on the way. Trying to turn here on a Faker. There's the Solar Flare. They should be able to trade this one back. Lucid tanking up a ton. He gets the root. He flashes away. He lives. It's a double kill for Showmaker and just incredible back and forth action in this first game. Fiona. They have the Camille, and there are just a lot of ways to set up Corky and Ziggs for success, which is why when we came into this game, you said it very well, Chronicler. You're like, this looks like a red side trap from T1 because they kind of gave so much over to DK, and it's very aggressive. It feels a bit risky. Here comes Lucid, who is very tanky, so that doesn't really do much. He does have to throw out his nature's grasp. That's a big win. Yeah, but there's vision on the Baron. So they're going to clear that out, and they're going to maybe start it here in a little bit. Well, they have to, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it looks like a pull-off of the Dragon. A lot of damage on his Baron already. T1, they just say, OK, we're going to set up the T1 Baron, but Magical Journey comes over, they are going to get out of the pit. So they did get the TP out of Showmaker, but I feel like they should could have stayed on it a little bit longer, especially with Bard. The ability to make an escape is a lot easier than otherwise it would be. Yeah, I, I think they have to stick around here. They have to continuously look for this, right? Crucially, though, Showmaker is still sticking around, and Aiming does have TP. Or rather, Showmaker went for a back, has his rapid fire cannon. Vision. They don't have vision right now, and you got to know this is happening. Lucid, I don't think he's going to make it here in time. And they've realized now, but I think it's too late. Yeah, and he's just going to turn back around, and especially with the paranoia. You don't have any chance of making it into the pit. T1, they take the Baron. Not even necessarily a sneak. They, they, you know, shouted it to the sky. They were like, we are doing the Baron. What's that, the Void Scuttle? Thank you, Krabby. And that's very powerful for getting position around the objective and denying flank teleports. We've Definitely seen a lot less of that. Yeah. In, in recent times in League of Legends, uh, once that was added. And especially as teams just get better and better about clearing all the wards. So you don't have the flank ward. T1 are just going to have to go straight up here as, uh-oh, not the Blast Cone to save you as it is going to knock out Kingen. But now Faker's 1v1. They're trying to collapse here on a Kingen with the Paranoia, but he gets away from the fear. Should be okay, but the Equalizer is pretty huge. The flash away from Baker, who is now in a bit of trouble. Everybody going to get rooted down, as there is no more Yoni. And a massive Jinx Bomb over the top is going to push T1 away. It's not a clean fight. Nothing in this game has been clean. As a lot of members here on the side of DK are also quite low, but they're going to stick onto the Baron, or rather the Dragon anyway. Owner has flash. It's might as well carry up. We'll see if they can able to contest this. Oh, they're trying to take the fight here. RDK. Oh, the satchel to deny the magical journey. He's not able to get away. And owner, I mean, he still could sacrifice his life to try to get in there. Yep. Oh, no, it's oh. It goes to MF as they're not able to check all the boxes. And without their jungler, Guma just steals away the dragon. Uh, Karia almost. No, he's just actually dead, not almost. He is just dead. 
They, they got to start Nash. 8 and 0. Like, especially with the positions that they got right now, like, Guma is going to get the mid inner. And owner is still here, so steel is a possibility, but so much of their setup does come from this bard. They don't see Camille. They don't know where he is. They have a suspicion. And the setup, as you mentioned, it's just the turn from the side of DK. They try to get in, but the arm guard is there for Showmaker. And this fight of Maximal comes in from Baker. And he's just going to get super low, as will Owner. Owner barely getting away. But at the end of the day, T1, they stopped the Baron take. And the turn is, again, not very clean. Hey, in, looking for more, and he will actually take down Owner. And that is pretty huge to take out the jungler. Owner is just about to get to life, and everyone on DK is on this Baron. Oh, they're going to delay Stalling. It, They might be on uh, no, just the dragon, or rather the damage is just way too much. And now here comes the combo. The turn comes in on Aguma. It's not very clean. They should just take the Baron as they finally do take it down. In goes Owner, but he's okay. Uh, now Showmaker doesn't have a flash. He's being burned down quite a bit here. They're looking to turn as there goes Baker into the backline, takes out Showmaker. And an angle here for Goomba, pretty good. Moana probably gonna go down and down he does. And DK, they get away with only two Baron buffs. Fire's first match, it's just challengers. Uh, so they still have Baron and they're trying to get the inhibitor. They're, they're, they're gonna get it. Unless see what, no, no, it's gone, okay. Uh, that that is six. And so on the flip side, I think if DK got Mountain Soul, that's game over. He was just gonna start it. They at the very least want to force a summoner, but DK actually holding off for now. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day, you do have a lot of control with the Bard and, and a lot of ways to kind of control space and control the timer. Uh, Showmaker just kind of gonna start this one off as we're just highlighting the fact that they have not cleared out the wards. So T1 know 100% that this has started. They have, they have, for, oh, now they know. Yeah. And uh, that's the delay. As Bard gonna do Bard things, trying to get the Scuttle Crab, but it does go to T1. King in, in the 1v1, obviously insanely strong, but he can't over push because of this. I mean, that is a very long dive and he's got hook shots still. So now you're down Paranoia. They are gonna get mid control, but now TK, Gonna just start up the objective. We'll see if T1 can answer this one. The last cone denied, and King uh, gonna have to TP back into this fight. The poke not really doing much from oh, Amy just yet. The bot wave. Is he gonna just push for the inip? I mean, he can always threaten an end, and potential for T1 to not get away if they stop the backs. But we do have Rumbles here, so he is gonna back now. As this is a very tense moment in this Are game. Are we just flipping it? We're just. Flipping it, I guess. I mean, Baker trying to find the angle, and it's just gonna come down to Goomba Yusi again. It's gonna take that in. objective, and they're TPing. They're trying to end the game. They say, enough with your Elder Dragon, but Jay There's no way! Stasis, and he might just be able to defend the base by himself. Down he will go. But T1, they still have Elder Dragon. Aiming's gonna go down. Down will go King, and eventually, his owner will take him out with the paranoia. And that might just do it as T1 and Gooba, they take the objective and they look to push mid. This is 42 minutes in. No one that can clear waves is gonna be alive anytime soon. Zayus can TP in, I'm pretty sure this is just gonna be it. There's the Elder buff and it goes to Gooba of all people. And it was a total flip. There were like eight people around that drink. Oh, DK. That's going to be it for game one, Veldas. What a suitable <laughs> ending to this first messy game. Absolutely. This is exactly the way that game one had to end after what we witnessed for 42 and a half minutes. Ready to take the 5v5 at that point. There's no ultimate for owner. Your front to back is amazing. So if the king pushes out that wave and then gets over to the fight and you just 5v5, I... I don't think you need to take that flip, but DK, they do have a lot of structure damage. They're like, we can make it happen. Uh, they could... I called it. <laughs> but should should it be Sivir? Also, you, you've got Jax, Malkai, and Alistair. You really enable your engage a little bit more with that, and it can scale the really well. of them right here in game two. As we're ready, let's hop into the rift for game number two the part of the map where it's obviously not really supposed to. Uh, as King and, yeah.
does now spot. And prior to this, I don't think they really were 100% certain, although we have carry Shogun mid, so here from owner to ensure that that can't happen. Now, can Kingen catch this wave? He does it level two, which obviously really huge. Does mean he gains access to both his W and his E. Uh, yeah. There are more people coming though, and, and Lucid's on his way. But Carry is still level one. I don't think they can really do anything about King and then Lucid. Oh, he was looking. Can he actually get the steal? That would be huge, but I think with so many people in the area, should be able to. And it looks like instead, oh. he is going to do the crossover steal. Has not been spotted. We see the question mark ping. I, I think they have an idea. They should, but like they I don't saw know if they him? can do anything about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's in the jungle. Carry is still level one, though, so... Well, this is going to run this way. And Owner's just doing the blue buff, so... <laughs> at the end of the day, Karius sees him, but it, it doesn't really look it like they're going to punish him at all. <laughs> yeah, no one is killing anyone. <laughs> yeah, they're immune to dying up there. Um, Zayus in a lot of trouble, actually. That Satchel once again aiming the at level the level up. So good. The level up really helps him, and he gets away. As now Karius trying to get in and punish aiming, not going to be able to do so. But he does unlock his Hex Flash, I guess, in this game. Do want to highlight that Lucid, very proactive on the early map, and was able to get the uh, summoners of Guma just now is Moham, no flash. Yeah, he's in a bit of trouble here. Three on oh. one. I mean, Aiming is there, but he can't really help him out too much. There's the shield from the Ivern and another satchel, but it's a flash forward. Here comes Showmaker, the Showmaker. collapse coming in. Guma in a lot of trouble. Karia desperate to try to save him, and Guma will be able to get away. Karia getting extremely low. The ult comes in, and Showmaker nearly picking up the double, but will only get the single for his bowling tries, as once again, we're starting off chaotic. Like two items, but very in a very quickly. different way, right? As, yeah. Uh, I, so you get your free grubs, yep. you immediately pressure top lane with your six. Uh, the wave still isn't pushed in and bought either, so you're not yeah. giving up anything there just yet. You already should, got two plates and bought with a swap. Kingen should just already be backing at this point and just run back to bot lane. Yeah, also give all that play gold over the Ziggs, but instead they will just split it. They're going to just keep going. Game against the Jax, also going to feel pretty good, so I don't even mind. Kingen is actually in the game this yeah. time around. It feels pretty good to get him some gold, I would say. Are they seriously going to get just get the inner at eight minutes? Uh, well, it's really up to T1, I guess, as everybody's here in Gozeus, who is level six, but now... Okay. And just gonna get the knockback. That's another satchel that brings him back in. The all-out comes in, and Zeus is just dead. And yes, they do have the Valkai, but the Nature's Grasp a little bit late. They will deny the turret from going down with the death of Zeus at Guma, least. But Cassante versus Sivir in the bottom lane. As now we get engaged here, Moham in a lot of trouble. He might just die. The TP is coming in. As down goes Moham, flash away from the root and the TP from Guma. As they were thinking about maybe trying to turn that if DK stuck around, but it did not happen. Played bot lane turret and a dragon spawning very soon. So there should be an opportunity here for DK to get themselves an early Drake. It's the exact same two dragons that we had last time. A lot of powerful Drakes here as owner. He's going pretty deep for this one. He does have a lot of support, but that is a decently fed Tristana with one item. That's an orc already finished. And yes, does get the ult out of the Nautilus. Kingdom does not have his teleport available, so T1 can actually play quite aggressive here. Yeah, they're definitely doing so, but at the end of the day, Owner's gonna use his ult, doesn't get much. I think if Kingen can keep a close eye on Faker. Oh, the flash from Karia, he wants to punish Boham here, who's just gonna flash away himself, and that's Unbreakable Will now gone from Karia. So trying to make a big play doesn't really amount to much yet again. Oh. down there as it's... Oh, can he do it? Oh, oh, he did it! 1359. Not even close. Success aiming. We should uh, this before the Zigs in game number one. They took down mid tier one basically with just uh, the Rift Herald and the Zigs. So they'll look to do that once again. Lucid. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I guess. As a mid lane, we are dropping the Herald. That's That worked out great last game, right? Yes. Valdez. Yes. Touch comes through. I'm gonna be too what crazy. What is that satchel about? What are we doing with that one? Yeah. As of right now, TP coming in from Showmaker. Those have two items here. Faker crucially doesn't have his transformation just yet, so Showmaker should be a whole lot stronger in this fight. Same for Kingen. And at the end of the day, this is okay. But they see it coming a mile away. Can just ult him away. 
So Zayus going to zone them out, I guess. Lucid could try to get in there, but now he's getting engaged on, thrown over the wall by the Alistair, and trying to flash over is owner, gets himself into an awkward spot. King in on the flank into three, and then he's just so tanky. They're trying to take him down, and they might be able to. They finally do. King in going a little bit too deep as owner will have to pay the price, but I think G1 should get out of this one ahead as finally owner will go down. And now Zeus getting kind of caught there by the Satchel once again, aiming so good with those. A double kill going over to Showmaker. Carry a oh, the flash is so good. And Indy goes once again, Goomba on the chase. And now Faker trying to punish him, will take out Showmaker. Will not be able to take down Aiming, but at the end of the day, looks like just barely T1 take the win in the team fight and they get the drain. Out thanks to the shield as hold uh, off. Yeah, we're not done. Faker's just, I guess he's just gonna go down, yeah. Taken out, that is the uh, secured kill yeah. going over to Kingen, the shutdown. Actually investing everyone. This carrier is on a bit of an awkward spot. TP coming in, they are looking for the fight here. Ooh. Nice bramble smash there from owner, and now you've got the flank TP. The satchel going to be used onto him, but it doesn't matter because Mohan's already dead. Just gets caught by the Maokai. Down will go Daisy. And that's going to take some power away from the Ivern. But T1, they get Boham, who did have a splash, didn't find a way to use that in the last one. And everybody just group around the Sivir and attack one target. You've got enough damage. There's still a Ziggs. So T1 taking a bit of a risk here. Carry has spotted. Yeah, DK really needs to get some vision in there. They get the control ward. They see, OK, it's not really close to going down just yet. Oh. It is an owner so low already and it looks like t1 will abandon the dreams of an early baron this time so i am oh no they're tp'ing and they're just doing baron again okay i think this is a little bit too slow though and this time dk does really know this is going on so i, I do agree and they actually invest a double tp so maybe t1 feel a little bit prized into this uh they're just gonna start it okay um they have an insane amount of damage with jack Siver and corky and there's no vision on the objective right now. Here comes Boham. TP coming in, but the map guy is just going to zone everybody away. So there it is, Boham in the front line. This is going to be first to smithereens, but we've got Kingen in the back line. Boham still alive, actually, to catch on a showmaker as he hops over the wall. First kill goes to Zeus. Kingen in a lot of trouble. And one more leap strike will do it. It's a double. And Showmaker, he can't carry all by his lonesome. Another shield comes in, but he will go down. It's a triple for Zayus plus the Baron for G1. For a 45-minute banger. Uh, banger used liberally <laughs> in this context. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if we're going to get an Elder Flip this time around, especially because both teams have two drinks. be greedy. Oh, I'm getting in there. Big engage on the owner, but he's just so tanky. Do they have the damage to take him out? Very nice satchel once again. Naming will eventually get the kill. And walking down owner, carry out. Zeus can even threaten to just straight up murder him as by trying to get into this objective. Will they be able to? Daisy is doing some scouting here. Zeus is on the flank. Yeah, I mean, Zeus on the flank plus the Maokai makes things very difficult, but Zeus is getting pushed away. The Drake does go to T1, though, so they might have to sacrifice their top laner for it. Zeus looking to turn this one around, goes into Zonya's, and now just trying to hop away, has to flash the hook. Kingen wants more, but... Okay, there's the all-out on Takaria, just gonna get the headbutt in. It doesn't look Still like T1 going. wants to fight this one. That's a double knockup, though, from Kingen, but he's just getting shredded. Look at that damage from T1's comp. Down will go the tank, and in goes Karia again just to, well, die. The hook? Uh, there's the hook, very nice for Mohab. That might just catch Baker here, as he is all alone. The rest of the team just on the run, but the resets are coming in for Showmaker. The flash. He's got the flash, that's another kill, another hop, another one. On the cards, he takes down Gooba, and now he's looking for Roder. I think it ends. Might just be the, no. Nope. Never wave. Okay, they're gonna try to go bot. Let's yeah, see how it yeah, goes. Yeah, six. And Tristana, like, we're very close to the base. Is that how it ends? <laughs> really? Well, they did Mountain Drake, and that was just a bit too much. <laughs> they couldn't get away. <laughs> oh! And Honor, he's trying to clear the wave, but it's just kind of sad for the Maokai. He is actually getting a lot of focus here for BK, and that's going to be also the Alistair, but at the end of the day... There's no way. Yeah, the TP comes in for Kingen. 
And they just clear out the wave, and their turret shredding is just so big. Down it'll go, and TK, they take game number two off of a chase after a single Mountain Drake. Very careful. Corky ended up getting hooked, ended up getting taken down. And in these type of fights, I think Ivern just offers so much, right? The continuous shielding, uh, the amount of confusion you create with the brushes, the continuous roots, it's gonna come through. And I was uh, actually saying this to you backstage. I don't know if, if Moam is gonna be able to fix a lot of the issues he has now in lane, right? Getting caught out D1 on the map. and D plus Kia. We got Maokai and Blitz once again. Let's hop onto the rims. What we've often seen is Kazantes just go for the aftershock in an attempt to mitigate Strong lane. And also, obviously, level one for the Alistar lane is always going to feel a bit weak as we are fighting. Yeah, level two here. The combo goes in on a mob. Oh! He knocks up the range minion and gets the hook down. Ignite as well, but this is his Ziggs at level two, which doesn't really do anything. Combo coming up for Karia. He's got his headbutt again. Trying to do some extra damage in onto aiming. Do they have kill pressure? Doesn't look like it. Aiming does have TP as well if he wants to back. But yeah, not not the greatest start for Moham's Blitz here. Rubs early on. Owner already over here. Aiming's on this way though. Very early with the swap. Owner will be able to get one. Don't think he should be able to get more than that. Although Zayus does have six. And King is nowhere near. So yeah, I think DK actually a good choice to... Back off here. It was to steal clap. away the crab. <laughs> and we'll see how much pressure gets put onto that Drake. But here's Kingen in a bit of trouble. Just gonna flash away. And he's Cassante, so owner doesn't even bother to throw the ult. Uh, yes. Hasn't been very calm and collected. As Vaham trying to get in and punish Baker, the flash does not stop the knockup, and they just they are able to block that one, but Faker, he gets the shield and he gets away. I know that eventually your objective setup is going to become such a nightmare. As we take another look, that flash shouldn't have worked out. Moam blocks it as well. That rocket ends up being a difference maker. Guarantees the setup. So that should have been a really big punish there. In mid, doesn't end up making it happen. T1 now looking for counterplay or possible dive onto King and Moam's on his way, but... He mentioned he has Spectre's Cowl, but with this TP coming in, they're trying to keep Owner around. He's eating a full couple of ults. Aiming nearly dies with the flash on and he's gonna find Karia into the satchel, but that is, of course, Alistair, and he will just walk that one off. Guma still basically full health. Still gonna be hitting that one. Meanwhile, Lucid just doing the grubs. Not half bad. Maybe even trying to get Zeus down here with a little bit of a surprise. Oh, the speed boost there. Yeah. It's going to be enough to dissuade. And I don't think there's anything that Zeus can really do. Uh, oh, he's going to drop that here. down. Yeah, he's got Faker nearby, but... Yeah. Phase Rush. And T1's just going to start up this dragon, as they did have control of the bottom side river. DK did just get the majority of the grubs. They got four in total giving them a bit of a buff. And the first straight will go to T1. Diving Faker. Snow TP available. Zeus is up soon, but not here just yet. Well, it's going to be a dash used. And now Lucid could just, uh, he's just going to try to do it with the W and they just block the ult. And this time it looks like they should be able to get him, but three man knockup comes in. Faker dodges the one Q, but eventually he does go down. And yeah, not much you could do to get out of that one, except to see it coming ahead of time. Uh, yeah, they didn't use that much. And they have the ult. So now, rooted, six ults on top. There's the grab. There's the combo. Guma not respecting it, thinks he can ult the wave. But now DK have stuck around for a very long time. TP's coming in. Zay is trying to get more, as should be Moham to go down. And only Moham, and it's to carry. The power of that Maokai Blitz, I think, really is felt. Well, they're just going to try to do it on the Zayus. Flash forward isn't great, and Kingen is going very deep for this. Might actually have to pay the price, but Lockett not even able to save him, and Zeus takes a while to go down, but they do take him down. And now uh, T1 going to use this to try to push in him in. Ult's coming down, and now Moha may be in a little bit of trouble as so many CCs come in. And he's just going to be forced to flash at the end of the day. Now we're going to turn this one around. The Maokai ult in, it comes, and you cannot avoid it. Down goes Karia. 
you love to see the lack of counterplay. Meanwhile, Faker was just in the top lane. Particularly because he it, it did go for the Andres into a first strike as well, right? Aaron and on this back, then it makes a little bit more sense, you know, trying to go for the most immediate power. <laughs> uh, we do have uh, some very aggressive uh. play here. <laughs> yeah, really sending it in to try to kill Owner, and he just dies. <laughs> I really don't know what the idea was there. Just kind of hoping that the rest of T1 would not be there, and well, they were there. <laughs> Lucid just trying to get that Celestial opposition. Won't be the case. Obviously, Carry if you do hook him, just ults and probably will be able to get away with it as. Okay, they're trying to go in this time onto the Sejuani again. Lucid in a lot of trouble, and he's getting so low. It takes him quite a while to take down a Faker's going to be traded. And now we get the root coming down. Everybody on the side of T1 just trying to run away. King and thinking about going in. As neither team really committed to anything. Showmaker goes over the wall, takes out Caria. The all out gets used on Azeus, who is pulled in, has to go into stasis. And Goma, desperate to try to save his buddy, it's not going to work out as the shutdown does go to Amy. And crucial there, Lucid ends up going down, but they use so many resources, and he still gets his ult off, and that's the key thing. If he doesn't ult, T1 just walks it off, and that's the end of the play. I don't know if they can actually get it. Trying to maybe kill Amy here. He does have Satchel, and he does have Flash. He's just gonna hold on to both of those. Faker is going pretty deep for that. Disengage Cone will deny anything, and Okay, they really want to take down this turret, but that's a hook on a owner. He's just tanking the turret right now, taking a million turret shots, and he's not going to go down. And we get another TP in here from Showmaker. <laughs> See, uh, he's going to be there anyway. It's fine. Also, no guaranteed that this isn't happening. Yeah. Still, this is only a second tier or a second dragon. Uh, unfortunately, there is a. Uh, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Don't, don't underestimate Six. I, I actually did, yeah. I thought that with the wave clear that they weren't going to yeah. get it. But no, I did was... too. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I feel less bad about it. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go. Yeah, this is just three turrets in trade of a Cloud Drake. And yes, T1 do get one back. He needs to. But now, he's really just staring in the face of T1's entire comp and saying, yeah, I, I dare you to do something. And well, the dare is going to work out. The hook is not going to hit anything. And they just engage on a loser who flashes away, gets his ult off again. But the equalizer's ticking away. And the ult from the Maokai is not followed up on, as he should have Warmogs as well. Moham looking for another hook here, as DK will look to extend very deep into the jungle. The Blast Cone will be denied, and Lucid is healing up as we speak. As the hook, once again, Moham just cannot seem to hit those. And you know, the combo's still there with the Maokai. You just gotta hit one, Valves. You just gotta hit one. You're gonna pull the trigger. Uh, or T1, do they call the bluff? Because they don't know. I don't think they're doing it. There it is. There's the one hook. That's all you needed. And you didn't even need the Maokai. Follow up here from T1. Pretty decent. Moham nearly gets punished. Zeus trying That's to get jungle, that kill, though. but it's not gonna happen. And yeah, they get the kill and they get out. So DK will be happy with that. Well, back to this. Oh, wow, that was pretty interesting, but that's an Alistair. And uh, still takes a lot of damage, though. Also a Kasane. Oh, Faker. Oh, man, that was a huge pick on a Showmaker. And now Amy's going to go down as well. What a super play there to pick him off. And now T1, they've got an angle from Aaron. That's the two damage dealers done times before, Valves. They got Nash. I don't even think this time around, though, that you will get the dragon, although with the backs, it's not a lot of damage, but it looks like they're not going to be looking to contest with the health bars low. And you just need to hit one hook. Well, uh, never mind. Yeah, I, I figured without, if you have either Showmaker or Aiming, you can do this. Is there the wave clear? But there's also the threat of the combo still. As uh, they're just going to try to get ahead of it and try to engage on a Lucid and King in. That's a ton of damage coming out, and the ult comes in from Baker to keep him around. And you see Lucid just desperately throw out his nature's grasp, and it's just not going to do much. So now there's not much threat of a combo either. And you're saying, okay, well, we could ban Ziggs here, but then Smolder's up. Yeah, I. I oh, King in. Yeah, there are a lot of people here in the box, and <laughs> King in. Didn't seem to know that. He is quite tanky, actually, this time. Doesn't even have to flash. Yeah. Ice cold. Anyway, um, but could use it defensively. There it goes. Equalizer comes down. They get the combo in. Carrier going to catch him as Baker coming in on the flank. Not going to hit the target, though. 
He's going to get extremely low this time around, but now Kingen all alone against the entirety of T1. And even the flash is not going to save him. Down he goes. And that was the fight right before Cloud Soul, and T1 should be able to take it down. Showmaker is now full build as well. Actually has six items. <laughs> Look at how fast that they are. are! What is happening? They're just sprinting at them. Lucid. Oh, it's a lot of damage actually the put turn. into T1, and now people are getting rooted up. Carry a little bit of trouble up against that wall. The poke is coming in, and they're just trying to back very desperately here. Well, there's the Baron, oh. too. A little little offshoot of the mid lane. Uh, look at the damage to this Baron. I mean, it's already pretty much gone. As Lucy goes in, he's not going to get the steal. It's secured by T1. Yeah, he got his ultimate off, but there's zero follow-up from DK. T1, they take another Baron down. And let's see where they can get done with this one. As T1 has found out, you can actually take Baron. Uh, just got to just gotta attack it. And it feels again as if T1, the team that is actually pulling the triggers on these plays, is just getting further and further ahead. And it feels earned, right? Guma sitting at literal six items, sold his boots. Mercurial Scimitar on the table. There will be Yone on a flank. They know he's there. They're trying to get the turn, the flash on in, the hook comes in, Faker! In a bit of trouble, as he is going to ult away, he is fine, but now, here comes T1 trying to engage onto them, Lucid getting pretty low, and he is going to survive. Did they have the damage? It's pretty huge equalizer, though. He's three in his massive from Zeus. It's going to burn them to a crisp. He goes in to the back line and takes down Showmaker, as he will go down to his CA and eventually die. Double kill comes in for Zeus as the rumble should not be let through in the next game as we have the freeze coming in. And Lucid is just on the run, knowing that it is pretty doomed as T1 will look to push and end the game. And T1 going up to match point the defending world champions, looking better and it's starting to feel like it will be a repeat of that first series, the order in which the games were won. Very different compared to last time as T1 gonna take down the Nexus here. Another 45 minute game, Veldes. And Matt, in the driver's seat at this point. These are the moments where you ask yourself, what did we learn? And I don't know. I do know that Rumble probably should go back on that ban list. That feels like a safe bet. Zig still hasn't won a game in this series. <laughs> and, and this is something we saw in the games. Uh, between Genji and Hama, so I feel like these compositions were... Uh, oh, it's Innovation. That's Gumiusi's older brother. A uh, very famous, very dominant Terran player in StarCraft II with a fantastic career of his own. So coming down to support his younger brother. Maybe Guma just figured <laughs> it out. He's like, where? Huh? <laughs> Seems like he didn't know. You don't often Based see... on this reaction. Don't often see, and now he's like looking, you don't often see Guma perplexed Ooh, generally. Zeus pulling out the Gwen for game number four. And uh, whenever Kingen makes that face, you know he's about to have a really bad time. That's the face he made yeah. when they got Nasus. Generally not he got happy Nasus. laughs. No. Which and is weird to say. The Raptors like do a bot side clear and then try and look. We'll see if that's going to be enough. There's uh, some early damage going in to both mm. Faker and Moham here. Who is going to back here at level one? Uh, carry up. Going for a little scout. And is trying to take the. He's going to smite it at 87 health. Uh, and now with Faker coming up, Lucid's in a bit of trouble. <laughs> As it'll take a extremely long amount of time for Carrier to actually get the kill, but. He's significantly delaying the clear of Lucid as well. And this old, this is Snowball from what happened earlier, right? Moham, kind of insane, is this is actually a pretty big deal. Lucid really wants this. And Moham is here, but uh, they're down a member, and I don't think they can really do anything. Yeah, another hook kind of come in here on a Showmaker. It doesn't quite buff for that. And then yeah. he jumps away, and Owner got all the Raptors. The has played out. We'll see, you know, where the grubs go. As Mom, level three, on vision, and Karia's here. <laughs> so now he's gonna flash away. Karia tries to flash in and deny the uh, jump over the wall. Will not be able to do that, but Moham really playing, flirting with danger here in this game. And 
now a little engage from Showmaker. Bunch of damage goes in on a owner, and he doesn't need to get the kill just to deny him access to the grub pack. Yeah, Corky, yeah. He doesn't have his package anymore, but uh, oh. that, that's, that's, that's because of the, using the satchel to harass. Oh. Yep. And DK, okay, Showmaker. Oh, trying to get in behind, and Showmaker, oh, the oh, auto's no. gonna get him! And Faker eventually does go down. Here's owner, though. Might be able to do a number here to lose it, honestly, but he's not gonna push his luck. Damage from the E. Yeah. As a, oh. Yeah, pulled over the wall the here. Setup. The Glenn, in a bit of trouble, does get rooted up, and now, looking for a little bit more. But Ooh. not quite going to have anything else happen, but they do get that pick onto Zeus. Here comes Mohan, by the way. Level six now, but it's gonna be scouted out by Karia, who is unsure. Are they still gonna go for this? Oh, Satchel comes on in, denies the ult. This wave's still here, the Maokai ultimate as well. On top of it, Mohab over the top grabs two, but he might go down to the turret, does get traded back, and now it's just a one for one, and Lucy getting extremely low. And nearly does go down himself, but he's very fair. Uh, these minions into the tower, and then also, because you're playing towards bot side, you're gonna give up the grubs. And particularly Guma is literally running it back. Oh, he had a suspicion. Yeah. And he just farms out the whole wave. Does have to ult, as Carrier gonna deny the crash down. Now he's throwing an ult into Lucid. Thinking about setting up a fight here, but Lucid is Malkai, so throws out the nature's grasp, and does say no to that. Trying to get in onto Showmaker, but he is Tristana. And he's just gonna walk it off. And that, that proactivity is oh, there as. Wow, owner really trying to set this up. He is gonna eat a bit of the damage. The saving is getting low. The smite also coming in, and they're gonna get the TP out of Showmaker, but owner might not be long for this one. As down he goes, Showmaker with the drive by once again. And he does use his TP to get it, but picks up the kill. Do you think they actually have an opportunity to kill him if Gwen gets to use his passive or use her passive as well as the ultimate? Not going to be the case. It's going to be, I think, still a, a good enough trade, but DK should be able to get the turret in mid here as a trade. So first turret blood is going to go to T1. Especially with the Ziggs available, this is 100% going to go down. Might even look for a second one. Yeah, uh, you can you can deny the crap. Okay, never mind. Um, if he just saw it again and satcheled, it wouldn't have uh, mattered. But down will go Moham here in the bottom lane from ahead. There's no turret showmaker. Moham's there. And if they could stack some drakes, ooh, you see show or rather Faker trying to pretend like he's uh, in a rough spot just to bait Moham a little bit closer. Nearly hits with the hook as uh, bit of Ziggs damage over the top. Now we're trying to get a fight on in, but Lucid going very close to the sun. The knockup comes in and the MFO gets it done. As Karia will be able to walk this one off, but T1, they bait them into a fight once again, and they come out ahead once again. And it was, you know, as we had all the vision, it was just obviously not a very good idea. Showmaker trying to chip away at this one, has some help, and Moham goes over the wall. So now we'll go to the turret. DK finally get in there and take that objective down. Who's gonna deal with the Gwen? No one. No, that's the neat thing. Well. Maybe with two people, that should be enough. Uh, she's very speedy, though. Yeah. Uh, Showmaker could hop in. We do have Lucid coming up here as well. And owner around. And the second it. owner, and the TP comes in. You see that owner's trying to set this one up. Has the potential to sleep two down, but Faker's gonna be taken out first. And now the front line of only Gwen. Not going to be able to do too much. He is trying to trade here on the King in, but there are four members of DK who eventually do punish. As now the turn comes in from T1, they catch out Lucid, who just goes in alone, but now it's just a bane as Mohawk gets three on the engage. And they're able to trade the support back at least. No dragon just yet. And now DK is just going to get it for free? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, They're learning! They're learning in front of our eyes, Velvet! Just take the dragon, and T1 won't do anything about it, and they won't be able to take the Baron, because the rest of the team is not doing the dragon. Yes! yes? They're doing it! <laughs> they're doing it, Velvet! Oh, they're doing it! T1 has no idea, but now they have an inkling. It's gone. And they can't get in here on time. It snuck away, smited it at, at exactly 1,200. And... Uh, King, a bit alone here. There is a TP available for Showmaker, but none for aiming. 
trying to collapse here on a Kingen, who is not yet level 16, as he'll deny the hook, but that is a Nautilus. He's got more where that's coming from, as now in goes the Gwen and the MF damage, as finally he will be taken down. Guma just gonna get that last shot. The rest of DK, everyone backed. Every single person backed to try to get to bot lane and save him, and nobody got hey, bot lane hey, and hey, save hey, him. Hey, Veldas, get that negative out. Oh, oh, the, the collapse. Oh, remember up. Oh, no. <laughs> they did use two ultimates here. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, the flanking teleport from Baker as now the engage comes in from Oham. He presses his button, but it's Showmaker hooked at a midair by the side of Carry. He's in a lot of trouble. Guma just flashes in onto him. And now it's all up to aiming to get the damage done as Lucid will be able to front line. And you're not letting this Gwen out of they, here. And they, no, no, I think they get out. Okay, they're going to get out, but this dragon spawning in 10 seconds. Hey, 600 gold Red Bull Baron power play, Veldes. Uh, oh, and now the reverse, reverse? <laughs> okay, which reverse are we on? I lost track. Oh, there's a double up there on a Lucid. Some extra damage. Uh, I, th I think he should have Warmogs at this point. Yeah, it does look. Oh, does he? Yeah. Does that have, uh, have it now? <laughs> Baker's on his way, but so is Moham. Is it? Is it just a flip? It's a flip. Oh no, they're gonna turn on to Lucid. Bunch of damage. Bunch it to Owner too, but he lives, and they can't take him out. And he flashes out of the <laughs> Mega Bomb from the Ziggs. It's just the Infernal taken away by T1. Super clean. Nothing to see here. A complete blowout. Can we take another look at the fight here? I think he's saying to keep Malkai out of the pit. I lived. Yeah. So we'll see if we'll see if T1 calls the bluff. This is a 100% flip. Owner doesn't have flash just yet, though. Ooh. It's close, but I don't know if it's going to be in time. Lucid still has his ult. I yeah. think he can get into the pits. Do they know the timing of this? It would be actually perfect right before Owner's flash, and they get the Baron, and they just get away with it. They're going to take it down. We got a Infernal Drake in 30 seconds, but now DK with Baron buff might be able to use this pressure to fight for it. Let's see what happens. DK, they're trying to push forward with the Baron in mid. They take up the inner. But T1 know where the real prize is, and it's on that Infernal Drake, so. Aiming doesn't have TP, crucially. Can get Pryo really easily as he zigs, but should be making his way over after that. I wouldn't mind, yeah, send Showmaker mid. Because you can still give this up if you are DK, if you can trade it for enough of an objective. Trying to find the angle for the Maokai ult. It might just end up being a flip as well. This is going down so incredibly fast. T1, they get zoned oh, away, no. and it oh. just goes the way of DK again. Infernal Soul for D plus Kia. And now they're looking to find Karia, who is going to get flashed on. Doesn't have the flash of his own. Throws an ult into Showmaker, but the reset's already there. The hook comes in, and he's dead. Kuma, he's, uh, well, he's over here by himself. Couldn't get away. And he should be going down here shortly as King and pulls him out of the bomb. But more importantly, the Infernal Soul and the Baron buff still up here for DK. They will look to push. Yeah. Fairly low here. It's a pretty small wave. There is a tree in the sapling, yeah. To deny his back as the flash on in on a finger, but he just flashes away and Lucid doesn't really do much at all. He's trying to frontline here, but eventually Karia does go down. And the wave. The one cannon! Look at him! The one cannon! He's shooting! Oh, but he can't quite get close enough and eventually just get cleared out. Zayas here on the run, and now it's a big Gwen throwing in the bars, and that's gonna be the kill! The shutdown onto Ziggs, and they hold on in this game number four. Uh, looking looking aggressive here as... So he attempts to go for this big play, but it's, it's Gwen. So Showmaker basically needs to be in melee range. Then Owner goes in with the flash and the sleep. And then again, Showmaker just on the edge. There's just enough damage available. That bot lane is still up, but definitely feels like 4-T1. They are aware that this is happening, but they should yet that. Oh my. Well. <laughs> Wait, Zayas, he will get spotted here. Yep, Zayas gonna be spotted, and oh, they get the catch, but aiming, he's got Pansies, and Zayas, he's gotten so low, he is going 1v2, meanwhile, down the goes on him, and look at the damage that is being done to the guys on T1. Faker, Gooba, Karia on the run, Karia goes in, 
but they're still here. They don't quite have the damage, and he's not a front line anymore. Baker goes down. It's only Guma who is very desperate. He's going to get flashed on and eventually taken out by Showmaker. As the GA is buying some time, and the timing is there. Aiming gets it down, and it's looking good for a game number five. DK have not been able to stand up to T1 <laughs> in a Look very, very long time, Veldes. They're going to go to red side. I think T1 still should be favored, given how these games have played out. But man, the regional gauntlet kicking off with... I don't know if I would call it good, but damn if it's not entertaining, <laughs> Valdez. Exactly. It's a lot of fun. Carry out alone, of course. Not able to stop it. And we will have Silver Screech in the first best of five of the regional qualifiers to see who will be our third seed. And uh, it's, it's already getting a bit crazy. Very happy to see that our, our usual gold graph still in action there. Yeah. A little bit of up and down, dipping Corky, still looking for coming down including delight who uh you know just, just won a simple he's just looking going like this a final and this this is my competition i am not impressed uh i imagine I'm sure I he's not actually i'm not he's a giga chat he's like man i'm glad to be here this is fun kind of joined up i think that dk has already kind of leveled up as hoya birdle and doc dom cheering on their old teammates the duo do have a ton of power. The Poppy, though, does kind of throw in a big curve one. T1 in particular, like trying to get on top of Zyra, trying to get on top of Ash and Poppy. Sure, definitely a second chance on Saturday. Who's going to do it? Let's find out in game five. I should have known. Sure. I, I don't think it was the, and it shouldn't have been, the majority opinion is. I think Carrier got a bit, but this is he is okay? A, no, I don't. Ah, uh, oh, not the stuff. disengage cone. Okay, well that that actually was a. I, I would have loved some more action there. That would. Have been I fun. mean, yeah, if he was playing around having that, I don't then. think that T1 should be looking to dive this, and it's going to be preemptive actually. So Zeus can now just TP the top, catch that wave. Setup was not the best. I don't think he's going to be able to get the cancel. That is going to be King and. <laughs> Maybe looking for more, but I, I don't think that you really have an opportunity to. And this also uh, really delays your back. Um, <laughs> Meganar comes in, but he's just punished by Kuba Carrier. Pretty substantially behind when it comes to the experience. As are they going to go for a dive here? Double sums on aiming. Oh, he's going to get hit in the wall. Once again, cleanses the first part. But then gets rooted up, but they don't quite stick around. Dodge from Faker. And Aiming does have to back. Moham just alone, trying to live under the turret, but they might have the damage. They barely do. And it will be enough to take down Moham. A second kill goes to Karia. Looks like DK are just going to be given all three of the grubs. Moving supports Moham up towards the top side. And finally, King and Will revisit the bottom lane. Loosen now, level six. Carrier. Uh oh, another one from Carrier! Just sets it up so beautifully. And that is a LeBlanc with flash. He had no idea. The script just lock. continuing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what hey. an incredible amount of burst. Yo, nice. You got him? Wow. A huge amount of burst onto him. And all of a sudden, the dive is kind of falling apart at the seams as well. And you take a look at the top lane, although I see that. Trying to get another engage here onto the Cassante. King in, trying to drag, or rather, Zayas trying to drag in Moham. But now it's Karia up against the wall against two. Just 1v2ing, but down will go Zayas as the dive finally does come to fruition here. And Karia as well gets baited into it. And finally, DK are able to pull off a couple of kills. I gotta say, felt like T1 kind of walked into that one. Yeah. Felt I mean, safe. this game is definitely in touching distance for the side of DK. Trying to get this on a Goomba, it hits exact. Right on top of the ass, forces that uh, cleanse. Ash, the Gnar, or the, the MF, the Gnar, and the Lilia. As oh. that's two. Yeah, that's a double. Trying to come in, but the knockaway on the MF means there's no follow-up. And it. man, yeah. Harry wants to go to Worlds tonight. <laughs> that's a TP. 
We'll see what it leads to. They want to try and play for this. Do note, only Lucid used his ultimate, whereas for T1, that was two ults invested. I don't know if that alone is going to be enough as Showmaker. Yeah, he's in a bit of trouble, but he is just going to flash That's away. the root. Yeah, and now trying to challenge in the river. DK trying to come on in. Mohan, though, in a bit of trouble, has to flash away from a lot of CC. But he can't away, and there it is, the re-engage on Akuma, who will go the down. Works. And finally, they will get the kill. Mohan will have to pay for it, but look at his, he's so low. And a shield, but not gonna happen. Double kill for the Gold King Gaming, who is now very much online, and DK coming back in this game five. As the gold lead basically even, uh, no one is actually gonna take the Herald, which means a lot of damage <laughs> is gonna go down. Um, it's a bait. Okay. It's a, yes, it's a, yes. That's, okay. that's Showmaker. It's just a bait. Showmaker TPing in, and... Sleep. Oh, that's a lot of damage, actually. In goes Zeus, okay. In the face of four of them, and he's just gonna die. So down he goes. Not really able to get much. Baron is about to spawn. No, oh, there's no way, Bill. There's no way at this point in the game. I and did, attention, I Chronicler. Did. Still a Blanc. Gonna throw in an arrow, and Guma is very low. It's a million things, it's like bullet hell. Even a boomerang, wow. Really just throwing the kitchen sink at him. Meanwhile, all of T1 are just pushing top. Here comes the DK. I got collapsed. They have a lot of vision. They definitely know this is coming. Yeah, Does that is... matter? Uh, well, Lucid can flash, flash R. Yeah, Zeus Carrier trying to come in as well. Faker a little bit. Okay, he's gonna get out of there. And the Nar goes flying. The TP comes in, and that is Zeus Mohab. Oh no, he's in the front, and down he'll go. But the sleep is coming in. Not as Zeus who flashes forward. He goes all out, but down he will go himself. And he's trying to get back in there. The MMO doesn't do much. Oh, it's going to keep him around with the Nar. And they get the kill up to Odor. The flush. And they're going for more. They have so much chase potential to burn. Is it enough? Kuma. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. And looking for a bit more. Carrion just wants to sacrifice himself. And he might be able to, but that is Showmaker. And that'll do it. Are they going to get Nash? I think they can. It's only Faker. He does have TP, but he is just one man. Investing into plays that you don't need to go for. Just let's say his die, it's fine. They can yeah. never Nash at 20 minutes if it's just him. Yeah, and composition-wise, you mentioned it already, but LeBlanc and Lilia, that, that is, is where they... Is DK again, they're here. This time around, not going to fall for that one. They don't have a Tristana, though. Oh, this angle. This angle, Oguma has to flash, and now Keria, he's going in, but they have not touched aiming. That's two flashes. Gone here for Guma and Carry and Showmaker still happily pushing here towards the bottom side of the map. And those TP invested as well. I think T1 thought that DK were going to play more heavily towards the Nash, or sorry, towards the, the Dragon, and that they could have an angle. Control of some of the vision, they are going to get it back, but this just gives timing for DK to do the Dragon. Unless the heck T1 games. are just going to start it on vision. So Lucid does have his passive stacked up. King and STP, so. Kingan should be able to take this as the TP comes in. And yeah. Kingan get Mega. DK are going to be here. <laughs> and uh, over the top comes Showmaker through the gate, and he's trying to just take he's out Kuma. He does it, and he's dead. But they got the Drake, and now they're looking to get a bit more. They trade carries. And Zeus in a very awkward spot, but Meganar is going to disappear. Dissipate here. Are they actually. Point in time. So. Uh oh. Little oh, setup. Moham, he's looking! Little Moham and Gaze. The Poppy's good for one for keeping him out, but the MF ult is fantastic. Zeus, though, trying to find the angle, gets the knock on aiming, but the damage is coming in. Carry goes down, and Zeus has the no sleep. help. The sleep comes in. Faker and his buddy owner are up against the wall, against the Kingen, and they will not stand. DK, they win the fight, and they're looking to push mid. Guma. He's standing alone. Have DK really done it? After all this time, Veldes, they haven't gotten a win <laughs> since 2021, when they made it to Worlds, when they were ruined, running the LCK. Look at Showmaker, he knows. He knows it's over. D plus Kia. They are going to Worlds, beating T1 in the first best of five, a regional qualifier. Showmaker will be there no matter what. Moments where they realized that they had done it. Aiming did not die the entire game, by the way. He was six and zero.
protect the aiming works out when there when there aren't uh, a lot of threats on the side of T1. And in a game five, DK able to figure out that draft as well, able to just get it over the line. You see Showmaker's LeBlanc. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the post-match interview translation joined by D Plus Kia, who just secured the third seed of 2024 World Championship in the LCK Regional Qualifiers Round 1 with a 3-2 match score. Let's hear from Kingen, Lucid, Showmaker, Aiming, and Moham. Congratulations! Wow, the fans are so loud filling up the low park for you guys. Kingen, how do you feel? You really pulled off that big game hunter mode. You know, it was such an exciting game and I feel like since we weren't able to show everything we got during the playoffs, we really wanted to have an unregrettable and really good match today. So I'm really glad that we're able to have such a good performance. And so all five games today went over 30 minutes with a very long game time today. What mindset did you go into game five with? You know, for both sides, both teams, going into game 5 gives you a lot of anxiety, so I think I just really tried to just maintain my composure, and that helped. So, it looks like you guys kept leaving Rumble open and then banned him in game 5, so what adjustments did you make in terms of strategy? You know, I think we just left the rumble pick open because we thought, you know, even if it's like a really big meta pick, there is a chance that the opponent might not have enough experience or practice time with the pick. So I think we really prioritized just on getting, uh, securing the Ziggs on our side. But, you know, we realized over time that Ziggs is definitely really good with Rumble. So I think that's what happened. And we ended up banning him at the very end. And so as the glorious finals MVP last world, so what can we expect from you in Europe? You know, there were a lot of moments that we were lacking in, even though we did well at times uh, throughout the playoffs and the regional qualifier. And I really want to be able to show a really good performance when we're at Worlds. And I think... <laughs> You know, being international, uh, overseas, I think it would be a really good experience for us to just kind of enjoy a change in scenery. So I'm really looking forward to that. Next up, Lucid. This is your first World, uh, world Championship appearance since debut, so how do you feel? You know, I'm just so happy just being alongside such great players. I think I'm so blessed. And I feel so lucky to be able to make it to Worlds. Honestly, you had an incredible gameplay. And you guys actually never defeated T1 this year, but you ended up managing to secure the LCK third seat with today's victory. So what was the factor that got you the win today? You know, T1's a really strong team, and because of the trend, we always, uh, we just kind of came today thinking it was going to be a really tough battle, but I think all of my, basically, uh, well, Amy was actually really confident, feeling um, really rowdy, and actually kept our team spirit up, so I'm very thankful. So what are you looking forward to at your first international match? Honestly, I really want to get a good taste of what it's like playing against other international teams, and I want to be ready for them, and I want to really have a, a good time. So, is there anywhere, anyone that you want to meet, particularly? You know, Wei from LT LPL is a really good player, so I really want to go up against him. Let's give it up for Lucid. Next up, we have Showmaker. So you broke the consecutive defeat against T1 and have qualified for Worlds six times in a row. How do you feel? 
일단 6연속 월드 진출하게 돼서 너무 기쁘고 First of all, 어, world's, 뭐 going to world six times in a row is always a great thing. And throughout the ups and downs, I think it's just, it just means a lot that we're able to make it to world. So I really want to do well when we get there. So your former teammates, Dokdam, Hoya, and Fertile came here. So it looks like the former teammate worked on you. Do you want to say anything to them? You know, throughout the regular season, they weren't here to support me that much. And it's just, yeah, he, they always treated me as if they were just an audience, just sitting there to watch the game. But I'm glad and thankful for them, obviously. And so you broke free at the 15 match losing streak against Baker. How does it feel to win such an important match? You know, I'm incredibly happy that I'm able to break free of that losing streak in such an important match, and I really want to just keep keep it going. So anything you'd like to say with to your teammates? You know, everyone is such skilled players and that's why we won today. And yesterday, uh, our, our CL players actually helped us a lot and they actually helped us a lot regarding practicing with matchups. So I'm, I'd like to say thank you so much for them. And let's talk to Amy. Since LCK was given four seeds for Worlds, ever since 2021 summer, every summer season third place team got eliminated from regionals. So you guys are the first one to break the curse and become uh, qualify for Worlds. So how do you feel? I really wanted to qualify for Worlds earlier on and being able to secure the third seed as the third place team makes me very happy. And from playing six four games in a row to swapping to Misfortune in game five, your, your Misfortune was actually on point, so how confident were you feeling in the bot matchup? You know, we were feeling that uh, our, all of our gameplays were actually really good, so our confidence actually kept going up throughout the match. The Worlds will be in Europe this year. What goals and resolution do you have? No, I haven't really been overseas that many times and being able to go so far to to Europe, I feel so lucky about it. Just I want to have a great time in Europe and really just take it home. Please give it up for Amy. Lastly, let's talk to Moham. Since your debut, you have qualified for your first world. How do you feel? First of all, uh, there are a lot of moments where I was a little disappointed regret, uh, or I can regret. But, you know, my teammates just told me. I mean, Showmaker was the one who told me that he'll actually bring me to world. So I, I did have faith in him. So I was, I felt pretty comfortable, comfortable playing today. Were you that confident, Showmaker? Yep, of course I was feeling confident. And Moham, you joined the team in the later half of the summer season. And you got the team the victory in such an important match. So how was preparing for the regional qualifiers? I think we tried our best. Uh, we put in a lot of effort. And I feel like there's a lot of moments that I could have done better. So with Worlds being in Europe, what are you looking forward to the most? You know, I was told that the food there isn't very good, but you know, I want to try. And being able to play up against all the other region and internationals, I, I'm very, very excited for that. You know, today was a rough match. And I feel like, given, given that I have even extra time to practice for the international, the most important tournament of the year is such a grateful thing, and I want to make sure that we win it all. And Showmaker, 
플러스 기아인데 대표해서 팬분들께 한마디 부탁드립니다. 플러스 기아 is qualified for world six times in a row. Any shout out to your fans? You know, we have two rookies in our team this year, and we made it to Worlds. I feel like every Worlds experience is quite meaningful, and I want us to have the best experience out of it. And for all the fans who came out all the way from everywhere in the world, everywhere in Korea, I just want to make sure that we are able to give you a great performance at Worlds. Thank you so much for your support. And that's the end of the interview from D Plus Kia. I'm back to the space. Thank you.